How do people who are deaf communicate? Deaf people have numerous ways of communicating with each other and with hearing people. Many deaf people use sign language which is a system of hand signals that correspond to letters, words, and ideas. When deaf people must communicate with hearing people who don't know sign language, sometimes they are accompanied by an interpreter, a hearing person who knows sign language. The interpreter relays the hearing person's speech to the deaf person by sign language and then reads the deaf person's signs and speaks aloud those words to the hearing person. Some deaf people also become skilled at lip reading, in which they understand other people's speech by watching the way their mouths, faces, and bodies move when they are talking. Deaf people who live on their own rely on special devices in their homes to alert them to danger or the arrival of visitors. Many smoke detectors, telephones, and doorbells can be equipped with light signals. Vibrating devices, or, for those with some hearing, very loud rings or buzzers. Dogs can also be trained to perform such functions. These hearing ear dogs alert their deaf owners whenever the phone rings or the alarm clock goes off. Deaf people can communicate by phone with the help of a telecommunication device for the deaf, TDD. These machines, which must be used at both ends of the conversation, translate spoken words into written words. The people on the phone can then read their conversation rather than hearing it. Enjoying television is also possible, with the help of a closed captioning device. Many television programs are broadcast with captions the text of every word spoken on the show that run along the bottom of the screen. With a special device attached to the television. These captions become visible for those who can't hear what's being said. How do people who are deaf communicate? Deaf people have numerous ways of communicating with each other and with hearing people. Many deaf people use sign language, which is a system of hand signals that correspond to letters, words, and ideas. When deaf people must communicate with hearing people who don't know sign language, sometimes they are accompanied by an interpreter, a hearing person who knows sign language. The interpreter relays the hearing person's speech to the deaf person by sign language and then reads the deaf person's signs and speaks aloud those words to the hearing person. Some deaf people also become skilled at lip reading, in which they understand other people's speech by watching the way their mouths, faces, and bodies move when they are talking. Deaf people who live on their own rely on special devices in their homes to alert them to danger or the arrival of visitors. Many smoke detectors, telephones, and doorbells can be equipped with light signals. Vibrating devices, or, for those with some hearing, very loud rings or buzzers. Dogs can also be trained to perform such functions. 
These hearing ear dogs alert their deaf owners whenever the phone rings or the alarm clock goes off. Deaf people can communicate by phone with the help of a telecommunication device for the deaf, TDD. These machines, which must be used at both ends of the conversation, translate spoken words into written words. The people on the phone can then read their conversation rather than hearing it. Enjoying television is also possible, with the help of a closed captioning device. Many television programs are broadcast with captions the text of every word spoken on the show that run along the bottom of the screen. With a special device attached to the television. These captions become visible for those who can't hear what's being said. Why do some people use wheelchairs? A person may use a wheelchair for many different reasons. Many people in wheelchairs suffer from partial or complete paralysis, which is the loss of control over the movement of some part of the body. Paralysis can result from injury to the nervous system, including the brain or spinal cord, or damage to the muscles that control movement. It can also be caused by certain diseases that affect the nervous system, including multiple sclerosis. Some people use a wheelchair not because they are paralyzed but because an injury or disease like arthritis or scoliosis has made walking extremely painful or difficult. Many older people, suffering from a stroke, a broken hip, or perhaps simply the weakness and frailty that sometimes accompany old age, must use a wheelchair to get around. There are many different kinds of wheelchairs. From the manual types that are propelled by moving railings attached to the wheels. To electric wheelchairs that are operated by hand controls that resemble the joysticks used in video games. Some people prefer a motorized cart, or scooter, with either three or four wheels. These carts are generally smaller and easier to maneuver than typical wheelchairs. While wheelchairs have the potential to give disabled people much more freedom of movement. That freedom would be useless without things like ramps at building entrances and wheelchair accessible bathrooms. Thanks to the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, a law passed in 1990, public buildings and transportation, like buses, must have facilities to accommodate people in wheelchairs. The ADA also makes it illegal for employers to discriminate against disabled people. Young people with disabilities are protected by the Education for All Handicapped Children Act of 1975, which specifies that all children, regardless of disability, have the right to a free and accessible education. Why do some people use wheelchairs? A person may use a wheelchair for many different reasons. Many people in wheelchairs suffer from partial or complete paralysis, which is the loss of control over the movement of some part of the body. Paralysis can result from injury to the nervous system, 
including the brain or spinal cord, or damage to the muscles that control movement. It can also be caused by certain diseases that affect the nervous system, including multiple sclerosis. Some people use a wheelchair not because they are paralyzed but because an injury or disease like arthritis or scoliosis has made walking extremely painful or difficult. Many older people, suffering from a stroke, a broken hip, or perhaps simply the weakness and frailty that sometimes accompany old age, must use a wheelchair to get around. There are many different kinds of wheelchairs. From the manual types that are propelled by moving railings attached to the wheels. To electric wheelchairs that are operated by hand controls that resemble the joysticks used in video games. Some people prefer a motorized cart, or scooter, with either three or four wheels. These carts are generally smaller and easier to maneuver than typical wheelchairs. While wheelchairs have the potential to give disabled people much more freedom of movement. That freedom would be useless without things like ramps at building entrances and wheelchair accessible. Bathrooms. Thanks to the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, a law passed in 1990, public buildings and transportation. Like buses, must have facilities to accommodate people in wheelchairs. The ADA also makes it illegal for employers to discriminate against disabled people. Young people with disabilities are protected by the Education for All Handicapped Children Act of 1975, which specifies that all children, regardless of disability, have the right to a free and accessible education. Can people in wheelchairs drive cars? Depending on the severity of the person's disability. Driving a car can be an option for people in wheelchairs. Cars can be modified so that the accelerating and braking are done with hand controls. Other modifications, like ramps or motorized lifts, assist the person in getting in and out of the car. Can people in wheelchairs drive cars? Depending on the severity of the person's disability. Driving a car can be an option for people in wheelchairs. Cars can be modified so that the accelerating and braking are done with hand controls. Other modifications, like ramps or motorized lifts, assist the person in getting in and out of the car. What is substance abuse? Substance abuse means taking drugs other than those prescribed by a doctor for a specific illness. In amounts that are dangerous or that prevent a person from doing everyday things, like going to school or work. The substance being abused can be alcohol, marijuana, pills called tranquilizers that make people feel very tired and relaxed. Household products that are inhaled, or a number of other drugs. Drug abuse happens all over the world, to all kinds of people, young and old. 
it frequently causes terrible damage to the person's body. To relationships with family and friends, and to career or education. In some cases, substance abuse leads to death, because the person taking the drugs gets involved in an accident or because he or she overdoses, or takes enough of the drug to cause the body to completely shut down. What is substance abuse? Substance abuse means taking drugs, other than those prescribed by a doctor for a specific illness. In amounts that are dangerous or that prevent a person from doing everyday things, like going to school or work. The substance being abused can be alcohol, marijuana, pills called tranquilizers that make people feel very tired and relaxed. Household products that are inhaled, or a number of other drugs. Drug abuse happens all over the world, to all kinds of people, young and old. It frequently causes terrible damage to the person's body. To relationships with family and friends, and to career or education. In some cases, Substance abuse leads to death, because the person taking the drugs gets involved in an accident or because he or she overdoses, or takes enough of the drug to cause the body to completely shut down. What is addiction? In many cases, substance abuse leads to addiction. Which means the person taking the drug is dependent on it to feel pleasure or to not get sick. There are two different types of addiction. One type is called psychological addiction. Which means the person taking the drug gets hooked on the pleasurable feelings associated with that drug. A physical addiction, on the other hand, means that the person has built up a tolerance to the effects of the drug. Requiring more of the drug more often to achieve the same high. Eventually the addicted person must take massive quantities of certain drugs to feel anything from it at all. And those quantities can sometimes reach deadly proportions. If an addicted person stops taking the drug, he or she will go through what is called withdrawal. That means the body has adjusted so much to having the drug in the system that the person feels sick without it. Withdrawal symptoms include fever, restlessness, vomiting, diarrhea, and severe dehydration. Some drugs are more addictive, or habit-forming, than others. Cigarettes, for example, contain nicotine, which is a highly addictive drug. Many cigarette smokers have a desire to quit but have a very difficult time doing so. What is addiction? In many cases, substance abuse leads to addiction. Which means the person taking the drug is dependent on it to feel pleasure or to not get sick. There are two different types of addiction. One type is called psychological addiction. 
which means the person taking the drug gets hooked on the pleasurable feelings associated with that drug. A physical addiction, on the other hand, means that the person has built up a tolerance to the effects of the drug. Requiring more of the drug more often to achieve the same high. Eventually the addicted person must take massive quantities of certain drugs to feel anything from it at all. And those quantities can sometimes reach deadly proportions. If an addicted person stops taking the drug, he or she will go through what is called withdrawal. That means the body has adjusted so much to having the drug in the system that the person feels sick without it. Withdrawal symptoms include fever, restlessness, vomiting, diarrhea, and severe dehydration. Some drugs are more addictive, or habit-forming, than others. Cigarettes for example, contain nicotine, which is a highly addictive drug. Many cigarette smokers have a desire to quit but have a very difficult time doing so. Why do people do drugs? People may begin taking drugs out of a desire to rebel against their parents or society. Or because they long to experiment with new feelings and experiences. Many people take drugs to escape from problems with family or at school. For most people, drug use begins because they like the way. They feel when they are under a drug's influence, or high. Different drugs have different effects some are stimulants. Which means they give an energy boost and create a feeling of excitement. Others are depressants, which means they slow down the body's systems and produce a calm, relaxed feeling. But no matter how a drug makes you feel. It can't get rid of the things in your life that made you feel like escaping in the first place. In fact, drug use usually makes matters worse. Drugs reduce your ability to cope with difficult emotions on your own. And they will make problems you might be having in school or with your family even worse. While many people refuse to see the harmful effects of drugs, particularly when they first begin taking them. The fact is that every drug has the potential to be harmful, and many drugs can cause death. Drug habits are expensive, and they frequently cause unpleasant personality changes in the user. Which results in strained relationships with family members and friends. Many people make the mistake of believing that the more accessible legal drugs like cigarettes and alcohol, are not as dangerous as illegal drugs. But legal drugs can have serious consequences, if a person consumes very large quantities of alcohol. Even if it's his or her first time drinking, it can result in a coma or even death. Many young people wrongly believe that inhaling household chemicals produces an easy and safe high. But inhalants, by coating the lungs and preventing the absorption of oxygen, can also kill whether it's the first time or the 50th. One danger common to nearly all drugs is that, while under the influence, your judgment is impaired and you are more likely to do something that could harm yourself or others.
Why do people do drugs? People may begin taking drugs out of a desire to rebel against their parents or society. Or because they long to experiment with new feelings and experiences. Many people take drugs to escape from problems with family or at school. For most people, drug use begins because they like the way. They feel when they are under a drug's influence, or high. Different drugs have different effects some are stimulants. Which means they give an energy boost and create a feeling of excitement. Others are depressants, which means they slow down the body's systems and produce a calm, relaxed feeling. But no matter how a drug makes you feel. It can't get rid of the things in your life that made you feel like escaping in the first place. In fact, drug use usually makes matters worse. Drugs reduce your ability to cope with difficult emotions on your own. And they will make problems you might be having in school or with your family even worse. While many people refuse to see the harmful effects of drugs, particularly when they first begin taking them. The fact is that every drug has the potential to be harmful, and many drugs can cause death. Drug habits are expensive, and they frequently cause unpleasant personality changes in the user. Which results in strained relationships with family members and friends. Many people make the mistake of believing that the more accessible legal drugs, like cigarettes and alcohol, are not as dangerous as illegal drugs. But legal drugs can have serious consequences, if a person consumes very large quantities of alcohol. Even if it's his or her first time drinking, it can result in a coma or even death. Many young people wrongly believe that inhaling household chemicals produces an easy and safe high. But inhalants, by coating the lungs and preventing the absorption of oxygen, can also kill whether it's the first time or the 50th. One danger common to nearly all drugs is that, while under the influence, your judgment is impaired and you are more likely to do something that could harm yourself or others. What does alcohol do? A short while after a person takes a drink of beer, wine, or liquor. The alcohol in that drink will be absorbed into the bloodstream and transported to the brain and the rest of the body. The rate at which that happens depends on the person's size. The concentration of alcohol in the drinks, and how much food is in his or her stomach. Alcohol interferes with the messages normally passed from nerve cells to the rest of the body a drunk person can't hear, see, smell, taste, or feel as well as a sober person, and drunk people are less sensitive to pain. Alcohol is a depressant, which means it slows down brain function. That slowing gives people a relaxed feeling. But it also means that the senses are dulled and reaction time is slower. With alcohol in their blood, people are less coordinated and lose some control. Over their muscles many drunk people have trouble walking without staggering. 
a particularly dangerous effect of alcohol is the resulting lack of inhibitions or inner restrictions over behavior. While most people wouldn't drive into oncoming traffic while sober, it might seem like a fun thing to do when drunk. People are more likely to get into fights, drive dangerously, and generally put themselves into risky situations when they are drunk. And because alcohol is a depressant, it will only increase the feelings of sadness or loneliness that drive some people to drink in the first place. For people under the legal drinking age, 21 in the United States, alcohol can also cause problems with the police. Anyone under age 21 caught with alcohol or under the influence of alcohol can face legal penalties. What does alcohol do? A short while after a person takes a drink of beer, wine, or liquor. The alcohol in that drink will be absorbed into the bloodstream and transported to the brain and the rest of the body. The rate at which that happens depends on the person's size. The concentration of alcohol in the drinks, and how much food is in his or her stomach. Alcohol interferes with the messages normally passed from nerve cells to the rest of the body a drunk person can't hear, see, smell, taste, or feel as well as a sober person, and drunk people are less sensitive to pain. Alcohol is a depressant, which means it slows down brain function. That slowing gives people a relaxed feeling. But it also means that the senses are dulled and reaction time is slower. With alcohol in their blood, people are less coordinated and lose some control. Over their muscles many drunk people have trouble walking without staggering. A particularly dangerous effect of alcohol is the resulting lack of inhibitions or inner restrictions over behavior. While most people wouldn't drive into oncoming traffic while sober, it might seem like a fun thing to do when drunk. People are more likely to get into fights, drive dangerously and generally put themselves into risky situations when they are drunk. And because alcohol is a depressant, it will only increase the feelings of sadness or loneliness that drive some people to drink in the first place. For people under the legal drinking age, 21 in the United States, alcohol can also cause problems with the police. Anyone under age 21 caught with alcohol or under the influence of alcohol can face legal penalties. Why do people smoke cigarettes? People smoke cigarettes for the same reasons they do any kind of drug they like the way it makes them feel. Cigarette tobacco contains nicotine. Which is a stimulant that produces an energetic, happy feeling in some people. It can also make people feel relaxed, and for some it decreases appetite. 
lots of people start smoking because they want to fit in with a certain group of friends. Or because they like the image they present when they light up a cigarette. But while smoking is legal, for those over the age of 18, it has been repeatedly proven to be highly addictive and extremely harmful. In addition to nicotine, cigarettes contain numerous harmful chemicals. Like tar and the poisonous gas carbon monoxide. Some minor, but highly unattractive. Side effects of smoking include bad breath and permanently discolored teeth and fingers. But these problems pale in comparison to the major health risks of smoking. Cigarette smoking is believed to be the cause of 90% of all cases of lung cancer. And lung cancer causes more deaths each year than any other kind of cancer. Smoking causes many other kinds of cancers too, as well as heart disease and numerous other ailments. If women smoke while pregnant, it can cause problems for the health of the fetus. And babies who live in households where people smoke are at an increased risk of dying from sudden infant death syndrome, or SIDS. Hundreds of thousands of people die each year in the United States from smoking related illnesses, and if those people had never picked up a cigarette in the first place, those illnesses could have been prevented. Why do people smoke cigarettes? People smoke cigarettes for the same reasons they do any kind of drug they like the way it makes them feel. Cigarette tobacco contains nicotine. Which is a stimulant that produces an energetic, happy feeling in some people. It can also make people feel relaxed, and for some it decreases appetite. Lots of people start smoking because they want to fit in with a certain group of friends. Or because they like the image they present when they light up a cigarette. But while smoking is legal, for those over the age of 18, it has been repeatedly proven to be highly addictive and extremely harmful. In addition to nicotine, cigarettes contain numerous harmful chemicals. Like tar and the poisonous gas carbon monoxide. Some minor, but highly unattractive. Side effects of smoking include bad breath and permanently discolored teeth and fingers. But these problems pale in comparison to the major health risks of smoking. Cigarette smoking is believed to be the cause of 90% of all cases of lung cancer. And lung cancer causes more deaths each year than any other kind of cancer. Smoking causes many other kinds of cancers too, as well as heart disease and numerous other ailments. If women smoke while pregnant, it can cause problems for the health of the fetus. And babies who live in households where people smoke are at an increased risk of dying from sudden infant death syndrome, or SIDS. Hundreds of thousands of people die each year in the United States from smoking related illnesses, and if those people had never picked up a cigarette in the first place, those illnesses could have been prevented. Why shouldn't I lie?
because people live together and depend on each other for their care and safety. It is important that they tell the truth to one another. Lying can cause bad things to happen, and a famous story dramatically illustrates this idea. The story describes a boy who lived in a village that was sometimes threatened by wolves. One day he thought he saw such a beast and cried, Wolf! Wolf! The villagers ran to the boy's house with pitchforks and other weapons to protect him from the wild animal. But the boy was mistaken there was no wolf and the villagers were glad that he was safe. The people returned to their homes. The boy liked the attention that his cries had brought, however, and thought that he would give the alarm again. He cried wolf, a second time, and again the villagers came running. Again they were glad that the boy was safe. But they told him that he should be more certain the next time before calling them. The boy cried wolf. A third time and the villagers still came, but not as fast as before. By the time he had called a fourth and fifth time, the people of the village knew that the boy was a liar. They no longer answered his calls, which turned out to be a very bad thing. When the wild beast finally did come one night, the villagers assumed the alarm was false and did not come to rescue the boy who cried wolf. Lying breaks the basic rule of conduct that helps people get along in the world. Treating others in the same way in which you would like to be treated. When you lie, it shows that you care more about yourself and about what the false. Information can do for you than about other people, who may face problems because of it. Imagine what your life would be like if people frequently lied to you. You would make all sorts of mistakes and be in a constant state of confusion. Not knowing what was true and what was false. The world would be a crazy place if people couldn't trust one another to tell the truth. It is especially tempting to lie when telling the truth will get you into trouble. But remember this, lies are usually discovered, which only makes matters worse. All P.E.O.P.L.E. make mistakes, but lying about what you've done makes the situation far worse. It shows that you can't be trusted. People who are truthful about their mistakes are admired because it takes courage and a great deal of maturity to admit when you're wrong. You will find that when you own up to your misdeeds, your parents or teachers will appreciate your honesty and be much more forgiving than if you had lied about it and later been found out. People appreciate others who are honest because they know those people can be counted on. Does it really matter, for example, if the person who cut in front of you in line gets into the movie theater before you do? Remember, as much as you wish you could. You can't control how other people act, especially not with yelling and hitting. But what you can control in a given situation are your own feelings and behavior. What do B? C and A D mean?
B. C stands for before Christ, while AD is short for the Latin phrase Anno Domini, which means in the year of the Lord. Some mistakenly believe those letters to stand for after death. These designations, established around AD 523 by a monk named Dionysius Exegius. Mark the year of Jesus Christ's birth as the beginning of the Christian era. Everything that happened before Jesus Christ was born is labeled as BC. And everything after is considered to be part of the Christian era and is labeled as AD. The years before the birth of Christ count down. Or are counted backwards, to his birth, ending in 1 BC. The Christian era begins. With the year AD 1, there was no year 0. Fairly soon after Dionysius' system was put in place. Discoveries were made that showed he had miscalculated the year of Jesus Christ's birth. But in spite of his error, his system remains the standard in use around the world. This system of counting years is based on the Christian religion. And yet it is used even in countries that have citizens of other religions. Many people prefer that non-religious terms should be used, with the abbreviations BCE or before Common Era, replacing BC and CE or Common Era, replacing AD. But the usage of BC and AD are still far more common than any alternatives. Why do I have to be a good sport when I lose a game? Games or competitions always have winners and losers. When you agree to play a game you have to prepare yourself for the fact that you may not win. Accepting a loss is hard because winning a game gives you a wonderful feeling of being the best. What does alcohol do? A short while after a person takes a drink of beer, wine, or liquor. The alcohol in that drink will be absorbed into the bloodstream and transported to the brain and the rest of the body. The rate at which that happens depends on the person's size. The concentration of alcohol in the drinks, and how much food is in his or her stomach. Alcohol interferes with the messages normally passed from nerve cells to the rest of the body a drunk person can't hear, see, smell, taste, or feel as well as a sober person, and drunk people are less sensitive to pain. Alcohol is a depressant, which means it slows down brain function. That slowing gives people a relaxed feeling. But it also means that the senses are dulled and reaction time is slower. With alcohol in their blood, people are less coordinated and lose some control. Over their muscles many drunk people have trouble walking without staggering. A particularly dangerous effect of alcohol is the resulting lack of inhibitions or inner restrictions over behavior. While most people wouldn't drive into oncoming traffic while sober, it might seem like a fun thing to do when drunk. People are more likely to get into fights, drive dangerously, 
and generally put themselves into risky situations when they are drunk. And because alcohol is a depressant, it will only increase the feelings of sadness or loneliness that drive some people to drink in the first place. For people under the legal drinking age, 21 in the United States, alcohol can also cause problems with the police. Anyone under age 21 caught with alcohol or under the influence of alcohol can face legal penalties. When did the 21st century begin? As the end of the year 1999 approached, people all over the world began preparing for huge celebrations. To mark the end of the 20th century and the beginning of the 21st. This changeover was particularly significant as it also began a new millennium, or 1000 year period. Many people pointed out, however, that the new century and the new millennium would begin not on January 1, 2000, but on January 1, 2001. The first year of the Christian era was not the year zero. It was the year 1 AD. Therefore, the first century, or 100-year period, ended at the beginning of the year. 101 fast forward 20 more centuries, and the 21st century, and the third millennium. Officially began on January 1st, 2001. That information didn't stop people from throwing gigantic parties on December 31, 1999. It just meant that the following year could provide an additional excuse for gala celebrations. Why do I have to say I'm sorry after behaving badly? Everybody makes mistakes, even grown UPS. Mistakes are a big part of learning to be a better person. If you behave badly breaking rules and hurting other people it is important to show that you realize the mistakes you've made and the harm you've done, and that you will try to do better next time. Saying I'm sorry brings that message to the person you've hurt or disappointed and often makes him or her feel better. And even though it's very hard to apologize, you may find it will make you feel better, too. When someone has hurt or disappointed you and comes to apologize, try to forgive him or her quickly. Remember, that person is learning how to be a better person, just like you. What do the patches on the uniforms of soldiers mean? For as long as there have been large armies, the personnel of those armies have been divided into various ranks. For such organizations to work effectively, some people have to be in charge and others have to follow their orders. One way to quickly determine who is in charge is to look at the differences in uniform particularly the patches and other ornaments on sleeves and shoulders. The patches on a soldier's uniform tell his or her rank, reflecting the importance of that person's position in the armed services. 
a beginning soldier might have a patch with a single stripe. As a soldier gains experience and earns promotions, the number of stripes will increase. A symbol that reveals to other soldiers his or her advanced rank. The uniforms of military officers have metal bars, stars, or eagles, depending on the branch of the military. Some enlisted personnel, people who aren't officers, wear chevrons, or stripes in an upside-down V-shape. Some of the medals and patches on a soldier's uniform also symbolize accomplishments. With medals honoring acts of bravery and outstanding service. Are there people in the world who don't wear any clothes at all? Yes, believe it or not, there are people in the world who don't wear any clothing at all. Tribes of primitive people still exist in places like the Pacific Island. Of New Guinea and especially in the Amazon region of South America. Some of these tribes' members have never met modern men. And women and know nothing about the industrial world. These native, or indigenous, people live much like people did in prehistoric times. Eating what grows naturally in their jungle homes and hunting with bows and arrows. In the warm, humid climates in which they live, they have no need for protective clothing. And in some cases don't have the skills or tools to make cloth. Because of their lack of contact with people from other places. They are not familiar with the idea of modesty or the practice of covering the body with clothes. Which is a behavior that most people learn quickly when they are growing up. Being naked is as natural to these primitive peoples as wearing clothing is to us. In our modern world, there are also people known as nudists who Enjoy not wearing clothes because it gives them a feeling of freedom. While these men and women wear clothing most of the time as they go about their regular lives, they sometimes get together in special, isolated places with others who enjoy the practice, too. Why are there seven days in a week? Callers are not sure why it was decided that a week is seven days long. There are many different theories. The beginning of the Bible states that the world was made in six days, and on the seventh day God rested. This biblical source, however, does not explain the seven-day week established in societies that did not know of or follow the teachings of the Bible. One widely held theory explains that in ancient times, many civilizations all over the world believed that each day was governed by either the sun, the moon, or one of the five planets that were then known. Because each of the seven astronomical bodies ruled one day, there were seven days in a week. Before the seven-day week became widely accepted, many societies based their week on the amount of time between market days. If it was decided that farmers needed nine days to accumulate and transport their goods to the marketplace, and the market day was the tenth day, 
then the week was 10 days long. Why do people smoke cigarettes? People smoke cigarettes for the same reasons they do any kind of drug they like the way it makes them feel. Cigarette tobacco contains nicotine. Which is a stimulant that produces an energetic, happy feeling in some people. It can also make people feel relaxed, and for some it decreases appetite. Lots of people start smoking because they want to fit in with a certain group of friends. Or because they like the image they present when they light up a cigarette. But while smoking is legal, for those over the age of 18, it has been repeatedly proven to be highly addictive and extremely harmful. In addition to nicotine, Cigarettes contain numerous harmful chemicals. Like tar and the poisonous gas carbon monoxide. Some minor, but highly unattractive. Side effects of smoking include bad breath and permanently discolored teeth and fingers. But these problems pale in comparison to the major health risks of smoking. Cigarette smoking is believed to be the cause of 90% of all cases of lung cancer. And lung cancer causes more deaths each year than any other kind of cancer. Smoking causes many other kinds of cancers too, as well as heart disease and numerous other ailments. If women smoke while pregnant, it can cause problems for the health of the fetus. And babies who live in households where people smoke are at an increased risk of dying from sudden infant death syndrome, or SIDS. Hundreds of thousands of people die each year in the United States from smoking related illnesses, and if those people had never picked up a cigarette in the first place, those illnesses could have been prevented. How do people who are blind get around? People who are blind rely on their other senses smell. Touch, hearing, taste to help them manage in the world. Blind people have to memorize identifying features like sounds and smells, of the places that they often go. They also have to pay close attention to where things are located in their homes in order to get around safely. Always putting objects in the same places after you so that they can be found again. Some blind people use canes or guide dogs to get around. A white cane indicates that the person using it is visually impaired. Blind people tap their canes on sidewalks, floors, and streets. They learn to identify the locations of things like steps, walls, or doors simply by the different sounds that their cane taps make. Various high-tech devices have been invented, including laser canes that use sound or light waves that bounce off objects and send signals to the user about where these objects are located what they might be made of and how big they are guide dogs or seeing eye dogs are specially trained to lead blind people about the dog and the person work as a team 
with the dog following commands that help the blind person go about her day. The dog, in turn, signals the person when she is approaching a curb or when it is safe to cross a street. How do you know when to keep a secret and when to tell? A good rule to follow, if a secret makes you feel bad, scared, or confused, share it with an adult you trust. Why am I punished when I've done something wrong? Try to remember that when you are punished it is not because you are bad. You are being punished because you need to learn that there are better ways to handle your feelings and control your actions when upsetting situations occur. When you are young it is hard to do this. To help keep you from hurting yourself or others, grown-ups make rules for you to follow. Some rules like those about sharing and taking turns. For instance are meant to help everyone get along and treat each other with thoughtfulness and respect. Other rules like those about wearing a helmet while riding a bike. Let's say are meant to keep everyone safe. So rules exist for good reasons, and it is wise to follow them. Punishments which are unpleasant are meant to remind you that breaking rules results in negative consequences. And maybe next time you will think harder when tempted to do something you are not supposed to do. Why do people wear uniforms? Some jobs require special clothing or uniforms. Sometimes these special clothes are meant to protect workers or the people they work with. An emergency room doctor, for instance, may wear special clothes to protect herself from blood and infectious agents as well as to protect patients from the germs and impurities that may be present on ordinary clothing. Most often, though, special clothes or uniforms are worn so that workers can be easily recognized by other people. Occupations that require uniforms are frequently service jobs, where workers help or perform services for other people. Workers in stores and restaurants frequently wear uniforms, so that customers know who to ask for help or service. Uniforms help police officers do their jobs better. Because people recognize them and go to them for help or give them the cooperation they need to maintain the law. On the battlefield, soldiers wear uniforms to identify which country they are from. Signaling whether they are friends or enemies. What is substance abuse? Substance abuse means taking drugs, other than those prescribed by a doctor for a specific illness. 
in amounts that are dangerous or that prevent a person from doing everyday things, like going to school or work. The substance being abused can be alcohol, marijuana, pills called tranquilizers that make people feel very tired and relaxed. Household products that are inhaled, or a number of other drugs. Drug abuse happens all over the world, to all kinds of people, young and old. It frequently causes terrible damage to the person's body. To relationships with family and friends, and to career or education. In some cases, substance abuse leads to death, because the person taking the drugs gets involved in an accident or because he or she overdoses, or takes enough of the drug to cause the body to completely shut down. What is a lie? A lie is a statement that isn't true. It is told on purpose, to make others believe something that is false. Sometimes people tell what are called white lies. Which are generally told to avoid hurting someone's feelings. If your grandma asks if you like her cookies, for example. You might say yes even though they tasted like cardboard while your motives may be pure. It's still best to tell the truth in as gentle a way as possible, or, in the cookie example. To redirect the conversation by pointing out something your grandma makes that you really do like. Most people would rather know they can count on you to give an honest answer. Then suspect that you might be saying something just to make them feel good. How do people who are deaf communicate? Deaf people have numerous ways of communicating with each other and with hearing people. Many deaf people use sign language, which is a system of hand signals that correspond to letters, words, and ideas. When deaf people must communicate with hearing people who don't know sign language, sometimes they are accompanied by an interpreter, a hearing person who knows sign language. The interpreter relays the hearing person's speech to the deaf person by sign language. And then reads the deaf person's signs and speaks aloud those words to the hearing person. Some deaf people also become skilled at lip reading, in which they understand other people's speech by watching the way their mouths, faces, and bodies move when they are talking. Deaf people who live on their own rely on special devices in their homes to alert them to danger or the arrival of visitors. Many smoke detectors, telephones, and doorbells can be equipped with light signals. Vibrating devices, or, for those with some hearing, very loud rings or buzzers. Dogs can also be trained to perform such functions. These hearing ear dogs alert their deaf owners whenever the phone rings or the alarm clock goes off. Deaf people can communicate by phone with the help of a telecommunication device for the deaf, TDD. These machines, which must be used at both ends of the conversation, translate spoken words into written words. 
the people on the phone can then read their conversation rather than hearing it. Enjoying television is also possible, with the help of a closed captioning device. Many television programs are broadcast with captions the text of every word spoken on the show that run along the bottom of the screen. With a special device attached to the television. These captions become visible for those who can't hear what's being said. Why do I have to take a time out sometimes? To help us survive, our bodies and minds are set up to respond. A certain way to situations that we think are threatening. We react physically to such situations first, and we think later. This response was very useful in the lives of prehistoric men and women when they roamed the planet and faced physical dangers constantly. When a wild animal attacked, for instance, a cave dweller fled or drew his or her weapon without stopping first to think about the danger he was in. In the modern world, we find ourselves in very few situations that threaten our lives. But our bodies still react to things in the same instant, physical way. When troubling situations occur, our feelings come first before our thinking takes over. When someone does something we don't like, or that upsets us, our first reaction is to act on our feelings, which might include yelling or hitting. A person can get pretty worked up physically. Which doesn't allow him or her to listen to the thinking messages that are also going on inside. When an adult makes you take a time out, it takes you away from the upsetting situation. Your body and feelings can settle down then, and you can start to think. It is normal and natural to react strongly to things that put your body on alert, but as you get older, you will begin to recognize that most situations don't require a caveman response. You will be able to control your feelings better and use thinking to guide your actions. How can blind people read books? Many blind people read specially printed books using the Braille system. Developed by a French boy named Louis Braille in 1824. Braille, who became blind when he was three years old was only 15 when he modified a code used by the military for reading in the dark. Braille's new system involved raised dots that stood for letters, numbers, punctuation symbols, and words. There are 63 characters in the Braille code, each one a unique combination of 1 to 6 raised dots. Once blind people have learned the Braille alphabet, they can read Braille books by lightly touching the book's pages with their fingers. Some people who become blind later in life, after having learned to read, prefer to use a system that incorporates the alphabet they are familiar with rather than learning Braille. A device called the Optacon can be used with regular books, it enlarges and raises each letter which the blind person can then feel with her fingers and read. 
Another way for blind people to discover the content of a book is through talking books, which are recordings of entire books, novels, school books, and so on that can be played back on cassette or compact disc players. Optical scanners are another way to translate printed materials into sounds these computers. Scan a page from a book or magazine, and a computer-generated voice reads the material aloud. What is addiction? In many cases, substance abuse leads to addiction. Which means the person taking the drug is dependent on it to feel pleasure or to not get sick. There are two different types of addiction. One type is called psychological addiction. Which means the person taking the drug gets hooked on the pleasurable feelings associated with that drug. A physical addiction, on the other hand, means that the person has built up a tolerance to the effects of the drug. Requiring more of the drug more often to achieve the same high. Eventually the addicted person must take massive quantities of certain drugs to feel anything from it at all. And those quantities can sometimes reach deadly proportions. If an addicted person stops taking the drug, he or she will go through what is called withdrawal. That means the body has adjusted so much to having the drug in the system that the person feels sick without it. Withdrawal symptoms include fever, restlessness, vomiting, diarrhea, and severe dehydration. Some drugs are more addictive, or habit-forming, than others. Cigarettes, for example, contain nicotine, which is a highly addictive drug. Many cigarette smokers have a desire to quit but have a very difficult time doing so. How many time zones are there in the United States? The continental United States, meaning the 48 states on the North American continent, which excludes Hawaii and Alaska, is divided into four time zones. From east to west, they are, Eastern, Central, Mountain, and Pacific. Each of these time zones is one hour apart, with times being successively earlier as you move west. So if it's 3 p.m. Eastern Time, it's 2 p.m. Central Time, 1 p.m. Mountain Time, and Noon Pacific Time. The Alaska time zone is one hour behind Pacific time, so when it's noon in California, it's 11. 00 a.m. in Alaska. Hawaii's time zone for part of the year is one hour behind Alaska. Hawaii does not participate in daylight saving time, however, so during that period. From April to October, when most of the U.S. states have set their clocks forward one hour. Hawaii stays at standard time and is two hours behind Alaska. How did the months of the year get their names? The months of the year in the Gregorian calendar, used by most of the world. 
originated with the ancient Romans, who named the months after gods and goddesses. Important emperors, and in some cases the month's position on the calendar. For example, January is named for Janus, a Roman god. Janus had two faces, one looking into the past and the other into the future. August commemorates the Roman Emperor Octavian, who was known as Augustus Caesar. The names for September through December were all taken from the words for numbers. September, for example, was at one time the seventh month in the calendar. And its name came from the word septum, meaning seven. Can people in wheelchairs drive cars? Depending on the severity of the person's disability. Driving a car can be an option for people in wheelchairs. Cars can be modified so that the accelerating and braking are done with hand controls. Other modifications, like ramps or motorized lifts, assist the person in getting in and out of the car. Why can't I yell or hit when I'm mad? It certainly isn't wrong to feel mad about things that happen. You can't help but get mad when your brother breaks your favorite toy or when someone cuts in front of you when you're standing in line. Life is full of all sorts of things that we think are unfair or that upset us. But yelling and hitting is not the answer. When you yell or hit someone, it is likely that he or she will yell or hit back. Someone could get hurt, and the situation gets worse, not better. If everyone yelled and hit when they got mad, the world would be an awful place. Stop and count to 10 when you get mad. That way you can get control of your feelings. Then you will be able to think more clearly. And thinking not just quickly reacting is what changes bad situations. Maybe your brother feels terrible about breaking your toy but can't say he's sorry because you're punching him. Instead, tell him how sad you feel and give him a chance to apologize. It was probably an accident after all, nobody's perfect. Chances are you've broken something that belonged to someone else, too. And if you and your brother use your brains instead of your raised voices and fists. Maybe the two of you can think of a fair solution. Sometimes even when you talk reasonably to the person who has made you mad. He or she still doesn't respond in a nice way. It is hardest then to control your feelings. Why are there days in a year? A long time ago, thousands of years, in some cases. When ancient societies recognized the need to record events and plan future happenings, calendars came into being. In colder climates, 
a calendar reflected the changing of the seasons and the movements of Earth around the Sun. A solar, or sun-based, calendar, with some modifications made by different regions and religious groups. Is in use in most of the world today. In warmer climates, where seasons passed without dramatic climate changes. Calendars were based on the actions of the moon. Such moon-based, or lunar, calendars still exist in a few places. In the system of solar calendars, the length of a day is determined by the approximate amount of time it takes Earth to rotate once on its axis, about 24 hours. The length of a year is measured by the time it takes Earth to rotate around the Sun. 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes, and 46 seconds. In 45 BC, Roman Emperor Julius Caesar instituted what came to be known as the Julian calendar. The Julian calendar was based on a solar year, with a year consisting of 365 days, 6 hours. The year was divided into months that were either 30 or 31 days long. Except for February, which has 28 days. Caesar also decreed that the year would begin with January 1st, previously the year had begun on March 25th. Coinciding with the beginning of spring in the Northern Hemisphere. It turned out that the Julian calendar, still in use in some parts of the world. In estimating that a year is 365 days, 6 hours, was off by almost 12 minutes. After several hundred years, those minutes added up. And the Julian calendar was about a week off course from the movements of Earth around the Sun. In 1582 another major calendar reform took place, this time instituted by Pope Gregory XIII. The Gregorian calendar, used in the United States and most other countries of the world today. Made further adjustments to align it more closely to astronomical movements. Who decides what is right and wrong? When you are young, it is mainly your parents. But also teachers and other grown UPS close to you, who decide what is right and wrong. They are the ones who make the rules that they believe will keep you safe. And help you learn how to become a good person and get along in the world. Adults make the best teachers because they have experienced a lot of different situations while growing up themselves. And they have learned lessons from those experiences that they can share with you. Grown UPS are wiser than children, who have lived just a short time in the world. But, as you continue to mature, you will have your own experiences and learn your own lessons. You may begin to question certain rules, and your ideas about what is right and wrong may change. This development is a normal part of growing up. The point at which you start to become the independent and unique person you are meant to be. Still, no matter how much you change. It is important to remember that some rules of behavior will always remain the same. One rule is to treat yourself with care and respect. Another is to treat others with the same thoughtfulness. 
and respect with which you would like them to treat you. When you grow up, you will have to follow the rules of law and government in the country in which you live. Many of these rules are based on respect for the rights of others. Why are some people blind? Blindness is complete loss of sight. It can happen when certain parts of the eyeballs, the optic nerves, which carry visual signals from the eyes to the brain, or the sight centers of the brain are damaged. Such damage can occur as a result of injuries or diseases. A person can also be born with eye or brain abnormalities that cause blindness. In many cases, particularly in very poor countries, infectious diseases and poor diets can also cause blindness. A lack of vitamin A, in fact, is the leading cause of blindness worldwide. With basic medicines and proper nutrition, such cases could be prevented. For every one person in the United States who is totally blind, there are four others who are visually impaired or legally blind. These people have some ability to see. But they see so poorly even with eyeglasses that they cannot do things that require good vision, like driving a car.